Today we're gonna tell you what gear you need for your YouTube videos, and we're starting right now. What is going on? My name is Nick. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to grow your channel, make videos, and all types of other YouTube-related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, today I'm here with Danielle from the YouTube channel Creator Answers. Danielle, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thanks. This is so bizarre being on this side of that intro. Yeah, crazy, right? <laughs> so Danielle, she has two channels, actually. She has one called Creator Answers, which we'll put links to, our, to her channel in the description, and she has another channel as well called Cutting the Caboose, where she's actually grown quite a bit yeah. over the last um, over the last 12 months or so, yeah. right? Yeah, sure, yeah, really. And basically during that process, and really just being a general gearhead, so to speak, in terms of um, camera equipment and things like that, she has just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to camera gear and audio gear and all that stuff. So what we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna talk about what she recommends that content creators do in terms of the equipment that they use for their YouTube channel. So when it comes to making videos, what are some what are some key things that content creators need to keep in mind in terms of the equipment itself? Because of course we know that they need a camera. Yeah. We know they need microphones. Yeah. But, but what are some important elements that they need to keep in mind when they're making this kind of stuff? Honestly, keep it simple. So many creators, and myself included, have taken this view that you have to get a DSLR and you have to get all the lights and you have to get tons of gear. Yeah. When really what you need is something in your hand to shoot with. Yeah. And it's bizarre. The uh, some of the worst videos, the hinkiest videos I've put out, have been on a cell phone. Mm. And yet their views have been through the roof. Crazy how that works, right? And I think that's just these are rubbish. I didn't script them. I didn't prep them. The sound was poor. The video was poor. But it was in my hand, and I shot something that was immediate, and it was great. It just right. like it just took off. So in fact, out of my ten biggest videos, six were on a cell phone because they were immediate and intimate and right there at that moment, which you can't script. If, sure. you're, if you're getting an event, the best camera is the one that you've got on you. Yeah. It doesn't matter if, if you've got the 10 grand of the DSLR at home, and you're out in as a story, it doesn't matter how good your camera in the house is. Because it's at home, right. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. And, and the other thing is that, um, and I'm using the show with both, both of VidCon. Yeah. Yeah, VidCon 2018 is where we're at right now, and you're actually using a, a camcorder. Yeah, it's a, right it's, a, it's a great example. I'm seeing people rocking around with expensive DSLRs, with big lenses, with shotgun mics on top, and these things weigh a ton. They burn through batteries. They can't yeah. record for long. Yeah, like this, like this as an example. Like, um, I think I get maybe 20 minutes of record time. Yeah, maybe 30 minutes of record time maximum before the battery on this camera dies. Out. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm running a camcorder, which. Are I can't use a camcorder. Everyone knows you've got to use a Canon, right? You've got to use a DSLR. <laughs> I've got a camcorder on a stick. But it works. Like, I've seen the image quality on it. I mean, it looks fantastic. This is better than any DSLR you're going to carry on because you're going to get fatigued carrying a DSLR. Yeah. So, so when it comes to actually buying this equipment, yeah. like, what are, what are some key factors that content creators need to keep in mind? Like, as an example, like um, like with this, right? Like we um, like we had the option to go shoot over there by the window, but you know we were able to come back here, and because of the lens that I have on there, it allowed me to open it up, so that allowed more light to come into the camera and things like that. So we could still make it look okay. Yeah. So 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 what are some some really very important factors that people need to keep in mind when well, it comes to actually buying a gear? I'm looking for a camera. What are some really important things I need to keep in mind in terms of flexibility and things like that? Well, the point. I mean, until so it's a good example. Until you understand what you just said, mm -hmm. don't buy a camera. Uh, Great. So until you know why you need, if, if, if things like aperture and focal depth and resolution and sensor size, if that means nothing to you, then don't buy a camera where that's an important statistic. Sure, sure. But I can tell you this, she actually has a video on sensors and I know, she, has, I she has videos on all the stuff that she just mentioned, so you're definitely going to want to go check that out. Thanks. And yeah. it's, and it, but it's true. Yeah. Again, people will jump in. Because if you ask a hundred YouTubers what, what camera to buy... hundred <laughs> different answers. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Although, that said, most of them probably say a Canon. Even though they've no idea why they're going to say a Canon. Right. Oh, everyone has a Canon. It must be a Canon. Sure, sure. But they'll tell you different Canons. And some will say an M50, some will say a Canon camcorder. These are entirely different cameras. But they'll say a brand. Which is great for Canon, obviously. Oh yeah, sure. So you understand why that tech is important before you go and buy it. So many people don't. They'll say something like they want a soft background. Yeah. And that's if you have your phone. Sure. Now, wh what about audio? Ah. Because you know, audio is extremely important. And like right now, I'm using a shotgun mic on top of on top of the um, on top of the camera. She's wired up right here with a lavalier mic. Um, she's rolling around with a uh, Rode interview mic, newscaster, I think that's called. So what about what about microphones? Like, what are some things they need to keep in mind in terms of the, the surroundings, the settings that they're in when it comes to, to choosing a good microphone for their, for their YouTube? 
So, um, the most important thing with a microphone is what do you want to use it for? Hmm. And the second most important thing for almost every scenario is get the microphone close. Okay. So you can get away with a very, very cheap microphone as long as you're close and you can get the most expensive microphone in the world, but if it's 10 feet, 20 feet away from you, it'll sound garbage. Sure. An easy, quick win is a lavalier microphone and a mobile phone. Okay. It's cheap, it's, you know, 100 bucks will buy you a setup that'll cover all that. Shotgun mics are terrific, we're using one right here, because this myth that a shotgun mic like reaches out of the yeah, thing and sucks the sound in, yeah. it doesn't. All a shotgun is going to do is help reject what's happening in the background. Like, I don't know if you can hear this, but right now there's quite a big crowd over yeah. there. The shotgun mic will do a fairly good job of blocking it from that direction, but because that sound's bouncing off the wall behind it's us, still gonna get it. you're probably going to get it on the yeah, soundtrack. Yeah, sure. So when it comes to recording in a, in a loud environment, what do you recommend for that? Close. Close. I mean, close applies to almost everything with audio. There's a, if the term is called presence. You, if you have a very present sound, and if you hold, and you can do this yourself, if you hold a microphone very close, or if you put a bucket over your head or something, you're going to get that no echo present sound. That's where you want to start because it's easy to add an effect of background noise if sure. you want that slight room effect. But it's very hard to take a room effect and make it go away. So close, always close, and then work from there. Okay. Unless you're recording sound effects, sure, so sure. B-roll or something like that, then that's fine, you want some atmosphere. But sure. for your voice, because when you're having a conversation with somebody, you're sitting about this close. Yeah. What you aren't doing is having a conversation with somebody that's 20 feet away. And yet if you're recording that, it will sound like the person on your recording is 20 feet away from the camera. Yeah. So unless you're doing that for effect, yeah. then that's definitely something that you that you don't want to do. So so with audio, you know, like you have like uh, dynamic microphones, you have condenser microphones for like a general range microphone for YouTubers because you know how it is. Like you know, sometimes you're shooting in a in a room, sometimes you're shooting in an office, sometimes you're shooting at events like this. What what do you recommend um, that people keep in mind when it comes to audio for just like a general all around? microphone for something that you know will, will get them through most situations to where of course it might not be perfect yeah. but it'll be a lot better than than using just one type of microphone so i would say don't worry about terms like condenser mm. and dynamic and xlr and omnidirectional and pickup patterns that's really useful to know when you're buying your second and your third mic but when you're just getting started go with the pack so pick up something like the buyer or the Rode Smart Lav, because everybody else uses those and they're right. They're, yeah. This is this is a, this is the zoom. But get a lav first before anything else. Yeah, and they're cheap. They're cheap. You know, like like to improve your audio. You know, like a twenty dollar microphone can make a world of difference yeah. in, in, in what your audio sounds like. And the boy that you're talking about, the BY the M1? Yeah. yeah, the yeah, BY, the BY M1 is is a great place to start. The Rode Smart Lab, I think that's under 100 bucks as well. Yeah, and it plugs so, into your phone. Yeah, yeah and, it, and it plugs right into your phone. And, and that's another thing that you can do with your audio as well, is you can say, okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a, a lavalier mic, and I'm going to plug that lavalier mic into my phone, and then I'm actually going to sync it up later with the video footage when I actually go to edit the video. I, so you can also do things like that to make your audio sound a lot better. It, absolutely. The only thing I would say with that is it does add a level of complexity because you're separating your audio yeah. from your video. Yeah. So if you want to keep it really simple and perhaps sacrifice a little sound quality, then maybe something like a shotgun on your camera. But bear that in mind that you're going to get ambient echo you may not want. Yeah. So you've got to bring the noise level of your room down and keep the microphone a little closer. So kind of like what you're hearing right now. Exactly. Yeah, like like what you're hearing right now, like this is the example of, of the difference. And and what she, what you know, like her voice right here, what you're saying right now. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. So this is, a, in fact, you can you can do this in editing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So this is what, the, this is what we sound like using the lavalier. So we're present, we're close, there's a lack of background noise. Yeah. And you switch over to the shotgun mic. Yeah, and it's a it's a much bigger difference. So you know that's a great example of the difference that you can get from using different types of microphones, and why it's important to think about what it is, what type of content it is that you're wanting to make, what type of situations are you going to be in when you are making videos, and what microphone is going to be uh, best for you in terms of shotgun mic, lavalier, and things like that to make your your stuff sound better. So Danielle, first I want to say thank you so much for coming thank on the you. channel. It's awesome to have you on the channel it's finally crazy. after all this time. Awesome to meet you in person. Yeah. Um, where can we find out more about you? So there's my, my tech channel, which is Creator Answers, which is literally this sort of content. Yeah. And if you want to find out more about me, Cutting the Caboose, which is my video blog and a bit of a lifestyle channel. It's kind of a grab bag. Yeah. 
So, um, but it's working, you know, like, yeah. you know, like it's, 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 it's good. It's a, it's a successful it's a channel. Hell, but it's getting sure. Out. Sure. Right. It's a successful channel. And, and basically what she's done is she's taken her knowledge of, of putting everything together for that channel. Now she's starting to share with the community and, and, and share this type of information in terms of things that will help you uh, make better videos and learn how to do all this stuff a little bit better. So we'll put links to her down in the description. Of course, there'll be mm -hmm. a card at the top of the screen and there'll be a link to her in the end screen as well. So make sure that you head over and check her channel out right now. And if you want to learn more about growing your channel, making videos and all types of other YouTube related stuff, start now by hitting the round subscribe icon so you don't miss anything. Thanks, the guy. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.